aware don't fully realise what we did in those earlier times to gain certain freedoms that they take now as, as granted. Because the Parramatta represents the struggle of women in this country. I mean, I'm the last generation of the female factory in that way. We want what happened to us told because our great issue had been to do with silence. This idea of it being a living memorial. You know, there's 12,000 or so convict women passed through New South Wales. There's so few relics and artefacts left. They, they've never been able to find a convict woman's dress. Because I imagine a woman would have just got her dress and re it into a quilt or some other useful item. And we've realised through connecting, through, you know, like me pointing that group and pulling the women together and putting their website up, that draws people and the stories are all the same. But the common thread is, uh, I have waited all my life to share what I, my secret. And it's the same thing happened to those women. There's no difference in the stories of women. If women uh, preyed upon, or kids, you know, I suppose, uh, 14. Uh, if you were sexually assaulted, if you were abused at home, if you were running, whatever, you know, if you're in dire circumstances and you bloody needed help, they'd lock you up. Because you were the problem, not society. It's exactly the same with the women. It's 200 years of history that never changed. I'm the first woman to be hung in the colony. She was here at the prison. She was sent out on assignment to a, a landowner's property and while she was there, she became pregnant. It has never been sorted out who the father was. It is thought that it might have been the owner of the property, uh, but she refused to name him and she gained this terrible distinction of uh, being the first woman hung because she killed the child and she had said to other prisoners within the complex that she didn't want this child to face what she had faced. There's another lovely story of uh, Gemma who uh, kept escaping. They couldn't keep her in a prison. She kept getting out. When she got out, she would enjoy her freedom and she dressed as a man and went out timber getting in the, in the bush and uh, each time she'd be caught and sent back. Her last major escape was out of the Launceston female factory. She, um, she sharpened a spoon, dug out the bars on her, uh, on her cell, managed to get out, she tore a blanket into strips, let herself down into the yard, then she piled up laundry tubs in the yard climbed up over the wall by using the laundry tubs and escaped into the bush again. So it just shows you uh, the difference, I, I guess. A woman who was prepared to go to her grave because of what had happened to a child without naming the father of the child and another woman that the system couldn't beat. The Paramount Girls Home, I have a collect I collecting some things. I have some items, right? I have the keys to Parramatta Girls Home. Now that is a coup, you know. You know, and there's a, a, a toilet brush, an old a wooden toilet brush, which was an object used on as a, you know, on sexual attacks. Girls would sexually attack other girls and use that toilet brush. You know, so they're all objects of distaste that have a really, I actually have to keep those things, you know, away. Uh, but I took the keys to a meeting uh, of uh, our women, but they, they, they couldn't touch them. They couldn't touch them because so many of the girls, the, the keys were put in the hand of the superintendent, and of course that metal, the keys would be used to bash girls. So those keys hold so much pain. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Your own identity was taken from you 
you know, and you became a number. I mean, my number was 131 in Parramatta. So you, you know, it's this whole process of depersonalization, that sort of thing. Our objects are uh, our resistance, and our resistance ma manifested in the form of scratching on the walls, on the sandstone walls, of leaving our names. And there's this uh, expression uh, that we use, or acronym, it's ILWA, 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 means I love, worship and adore. And uh, that's scratched in just all over the place, and you know, and often you'll find that in the heart with a number in the, in the middle of it, that's a girl's number, so you get number, you know, heart, number 71, you know, with the arrow, number 78. Right. Would you know what that means? Yeah, it's a girl's number. Sending her love to another. On Susan Boyle, the English singer who came up to, to gain almost instant fame. That story gave hope that you are never too old to dream a dream and maybe it will happen for you. And I think that's what's happened here. There's been a dream and it's slowly but surely coming to fruition.